Have you ever wanted to explore your own backyard but didn't know how to? Well today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to craft a Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness Trip, aka BWCAW, and how to make this trip fit your needs. We're going to be looking at an outfitter if you need the gear, looking at a route, looking at your interest, and then assessing your abilities. And I'm going to be pulling information from the U.S. Forest Service, the Ely Echo, a BWCAW outfitter here in Ely, and then an interview with a guide here in Ely. So starting off with the history of the Boundary Waters, according to the USDA and National Forest Service, the BWCA was carved by ancient glaciers thousands of years ago. The BWCA has over 1,200 miles of canoeing routes and over 2,000 campsites. The Boundary Waters is also protected by the Wilderness Act of 1964, which had further safeguarded by President Jimmy Carter, so this removed houses and resorts and logging operations from the Boundary Waters, and no motorized anything can be in there, so like ATVs or motorboats. And this is a picture of the Boundary Waters now. According to the Ely Echo, the Forest Service has just released the annual Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness Permit Report of 2020 to 2022. This revealed some interesting trends. Over the past five years, there has been an average 9% decrease in annual visitors, with these numbers dropping to 150,842 in 2022. What this decline may seem really concerning, it actually reflects the return to pre-pandemic levels of visitor use. This is very beneficial to the wilderness because during COVID, a lot of people did travel to the Boundary Waters illegally without a permit, and it did kind of destruct some of the wilderness in the Boundary Waters because they did not practice leave no trace and did not follow a lot of the rules. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is selecting the right outfitter. Many of you guys probably don't have the right gear, so choosing an outfitter with reputable reviews is very important. So if you want to do fully outfitting, you just bring your clothes and toiletries and you're all set. If you don't want to do partial outfitting, if you have a few favorite like gear of your own, you can also do that. They also provide shuttle services, which is really nice because you don't have to worry about your car at entry points and it just really expedites the process. They also can help you with your permit and matching the right trip to you. Um, it's really nice that they can just easily put it in their system and you don't have to like learn a whole new system of how to reserve a permit. And it can be kind of tricky, so they do really greatly expedite the whole process and make planning your trip very easier. So I did an interview with Jim Blauk, owner of Moose Track Adventures Resort and Outfitter Service. He shared some insights into the art of matching customers with the perfect trip. Drawing from the decades of experience and intimate knowledge of the BWCAW, Jim emphasized the importance of understanding each customer's preferences and expectations. Whether one seeks a fishing excursion or adrenaline-fueled journey, through the rugged landscapes, experienced outfitters like Jim poses the importance of just understanding the customer's needs and matching them to the perfect journey that they want. So now that we've covered routes, we can head on over to crafting a route. So understanding BWCAW maps is very important because um, studying the entry points and the portages is just a very big process of the trip. So learning how far the portages are because each portage is measured in a rod which is different than a mile. It's a little bit bigger and it's a, it's a different type of learning process. And as you see the boundary water map is very large so just crafting the right route for you is very important because there's it can be overwhelming about how much information you can find out on the internet. The next thing that is important to do is doing leave no trace. So this is important because according to the BWCAW outfitter in Ely, adhering to leave no trace principles involves packing out all waste, disposing trash properly, and leaving natural areas undisturbed. So this is very important because you don't want to, to disturb the wilderness and you don't want to leave trash or burn certain things that you're not supposed to like trash. And you don't want to pick plants, you don't want to just destroy what is out there. You should just, the way you found it, you should leave it. So next thing we will be talking about is aligning experiences with your interests. So if you're a wildlife person, a fishing person, photography or nature lover, just crafting the right experience for you is very important because if depending on the size of your trip, 
like fishing trips, usually you don't move every day because packing up camp can be very time consuming. So you might want to do like a five day trip, just base camp and fish every day. Well, if you want to see lots of area, you want to move every day, you want to do like a five day trip and move every single day and pack up early in the morning and head out to see the sunrise and just see the scenery and see wildlife. Like a lot of photographers do that to see the wildlife at different points of the day. And it's just a really cool experience. The next thing we'll be talking about is assessing your abilities. So this is very important because paddling skill, you need to be like honest with yourself, like your physical aspects, like are you able to portage two miles or can you go on uneven train? So that's also really important because everything you bring, you do have to portage yourself with all that gear. So depending on how much stuff you wanna bring, like it all counts. Um, it can be time consuming, so just making sure that your fitness level is pretty good because you need to make it through all the portages. Also, just navigation skills are key to look at. Like, are you able to read a map and understand where you are? Because service is not always good in the boundary waters, so that can be kind of iffy. So just make sure that you are able to navigate yourself. Um, group dynamics is also important because you want to make sure everyone's comfortable and not be bossy and just have roles for everybody and just communicate very well with all your team members because you all wanna have fun. And then safety measures is also important because you should establish safety protocols like letting people know in Minnesota or anywhere else that you're on a trip. So you get on a, back on a certain day and time and then they can check in and make sure that you made it. So in summary, the Boundary Waters involves lots of careful planning, but it can be super fun and just such a thrill of an experience. So making sure that you're choosing an outfit that's good, making sure that you're planning your route well, can all just make the experience super fun and exhilarating. As you start your BWCA journey, remember if a bear approaches your campsite, you don't have to outrun the bear, you just have to be the slowest, just don't be the slowest camping buddy. Thank you.